This is the Floridaville. Get to know the people behind the Florida names you know. I'm your host, Rosanna Catalano. On this episode, we get to know Matt Reardon, an executive, attorney, speaker, husband, and father. He currently serves as Chief Operating Officer for Four Star Homes, Central Florida's largest manufactured home broker, where he focuses his efforts on strategic growth, marketing, and business operations. We are live video streaming today's episode remotely. I'm in my home office in Tallahassee, and Matt is speaking with us from his office. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks. Great to be here. So in the introduction to our show, I introduced you as the Chief Operating Officer for Four Star Homes. Can you tell us what your day-to-day role is with the company? Well, uh, I kind of do a little bit of everything uh, at our company. Uh, I I get to work with my mom on a regular basis, so I think we'll talk about uh, being in a family business a little bit here. Uh, But uh, for example, today I started out in Uh, Orlando. I uh, went to Daytona Beach. I was up to Flagler. I went to DeLand and now I'm back in Orlando. So um, we have eight offices around the state uh, where we primarily focus our business on the resale and brokerage of manufactured mobile homes, which is obviously a very large industry here in the state of Florida. Uh, You know, my job, uh, while I do handle some legal stuff for the business, we don't have a ton of that that comes in. So I help with marketing a lot. I look at a lot of the financials uh, and I sort of do a lot of the oversight on the company. Uh, We have uh, several hundred uh, sales agents that work with us. And so they're out there listing and selling homes. Uh, We're helping them put their deals together, keep their deals together. But uh, the fun part about my job is no day is ever the same. I get to sometimes touch financials. Sometimes I get to walk through homes. I walked through a few of them today where we do some remodeling projects. Uh, other times I get stuck behind a spreadsheet or uh, even today I was designing a, a mail or postcard that we send out to a lot of different places. So uh, I use a lot of different skills from uh, you know uh, either growing up, my education, or just sort of some hands-on uh, training that I've done. And, uh, and every day is, I can tell you, every day is different uh, at Four Star Homes, for me especially. So for those in our audience unfamiliar with Four Star Homes, can you tell us about the company, how it got started? Yeah. So uh, the first question we always get is, why is it four star and not five star? Um, uh, Which is kind of a funny story. Uh, But uh, my mom started the business, uh, single mom, raising two boys in the Daytona Beach area uh, a number of years ago. She went to work for uh, a company at that time. Some people will recognize them from their commercials called Foremost Insurance. Uh, And Foremost is a big insurance company. They do a lot of manufactured housing insurance, but also recreational vehicles, motorcycles, boats, all that kind of stuff. Um, And they started a division where uh, they were going to help broker manufactured housings, or at that time known as mobile homes, um, in order to sell them mobile home insurance on the back end of the deal. Um, Mom ran one of their offices for a number of years, and they decided that they were going to just not sell houses anymore, just focus on insurance. So uh, one day she was working for a company. The next day she gets a call and they say, we're closing up shop and you know, you can do with what you want. We'll, uh, we'll let you go in business for yourself, but you have to change the name. So overnight she changed the name from foremost to four star, uh, cause it just made sense. Uh, kept the same colors at that time. It was orange and black. Now we're a little bit closer to garnet and gold, uh, red and gold. Uh, and, uh, we primarily focus our business on the brokerage and resale of manufactured and mobile homes. Uh, it's similar to real estate in that obviously people live in a manufactured house, uh, but they don't own the land underneath the home. Uh, we call it chattel property. So the transaction is a little different because it's actually one of the funny stories. People, first time mobile home buyers, they laugh when I say, single wide, double wide, triple wide. So what that means is how many pieces did your home come in from the factory? So a manufactured home is built off site in a factory. You've seen them on the road before and they put them behind a semi and drag them to wherever their final location is going to be. Um, And so if you have a single wide mobile home, you actually have one single title and it gets registered through the Department of Motor Vehicles. Uh, If you have a double wide, you actually have two titles, just like you would have for a car and they get registered through the Department of Motor Vehicles as we do a title transfer. Uh, So manufactured housing is, I always describe it uh, as midway between real estate and automobile sales. 
Uh, it's a little easier and quicker, like an automobile sale. We do a lot of cash transactions and the titles go through the DMV. Uh, but our agents, as we sell inventory, operate very similar to real estate agents because they have to list our inventory you know, through a seller and then we have to broker it. So uh, that's primarily what we do. We have a couple other facets of, of our business, but we probably do about 80 to 90% of our business is focused strictly on the manufactured housing transaction. I did not know that about manufacturing. <laughs> I knew it was a big industry. I just didn't know to what extent. So thank you for that. Yeah. Now, you worked for some pretty significant and well-known companies before working for Four Star Homes. Can you tell us what motivated you to make that transition to your family's company? Yeah, I, you know, I had a really fun career. Um, uh, and I think we'll talk about that, you know, kind of how I, I got to force our homes. I, uh, if I ever write a book one day, I think the tagline is going to be from theme parks to trailer parks. Because uh, I think that'll just get uh, people thinking about what in the world happened. But, uh, you know, I was with, uh, uh, went to law school, was with NASCAR for a number of years uh, in Daytona Beach, uh, made the transition to SeaWorld Parks Entertainment here in Orlando, uh, and then moved from the theme park industry uh, to, to help run our family business. But, uh, you know, after 15, 18 years um, being corporate counsel and also being in a senior executive role um, in the theme park industry, for, for me, it was a quality of life issue. Um, it was also some transition that was taking place, uh, you know, at SeaWorld when I was there uh, and also the growth of our business. So you're right. It's a very, very big operation in Florida. It's a huge industry in Florida. Um, you know, my mom and I sort of talked about it and she said, I got a few options here. I can sell the business, I can shut the business down, or we can, you know, find somebody to run it. Um, and for me, it was, I was doing a lot of international travel uh, back in kind of 17 and 18. I, I spent a lot of time in China, uh, a lot of time in the Middle East, and I was running the international development for SeaWorld. So I was on a plane a lot and we have three small uh, children at home. And uh, it was a quality of life for me. Uh, it was also uh, a decision where I got the opportunity to work in a family business and uh, and kind of control my own destiny a little bit more than uh, than being in a corporation like I was. So uh, the business has grown. It gave me a really cool opportunity to you know, be in the business, but also use my finance background, my legal background uh, to help engage and, and try to grow what, what my mom has built over the last couple of years. Amazing. So let's take a quick commercial break and we come back. I want to talk to you about your childhood, earlier work, and your faith. At Rocket Ship Consultants, our mission is to take your organization to the next level. Our team develops strategic communication plans that help entrepreneurs, corporations, associations, and individuals reach new heights. Our consulting team is made up of attorneys with additional experience in journalism, public relations, politics, broadcasting, and advocacy. Let us help you take that dream you have for a podcast or video show and make it into a reality. We can create networking opportunities, educational forums, and interactive conferences to spread your message. Let our team provide you with fresh ideas and inspiration. Rocket Ship Consultants offers a variety of services, so check out our website at rocketshipconsultants.com. Take off with Rocket Ship Consultants and launch your organization with us. Welcome back to the Floridaville. On this episode, we are speaking to Matt Reardon, an attorney and business executive with Four Star Homes. Now, I've known you for several years, and I know your faith is very important to you. Have you always had a strong faith? Yeah, um, I, I have. It's uh, our, my faith is the paramount thing, and and everything that I do, guiding principles to my life. Uh, I try to operate, you know, our business and my life according to biblical principles. And you know, honestly, I've kind of been around the church um, and in church and youth camps and youth groups and all that since really I can I can remember my. Um, my brother and I grew up with my mom in a single parent home, and the church was one of those foundational, uh, you know, deals in our home that we were, uh, you know, 
uh, in church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, we were kind of just our, our life revolved around that. But, you know, as I grew up and really developed my, my own relationship with Christ, it's become the foundation uh, that started at a very early age and really solidified in my early teenage years, college years. Um, and uh, it's important to me. It's the, the number one thing uh, that I try to guide my life by, try to make my decisions by, but it's a, it's a critical factor and it, it's, a, it's part of who I am. So you alluded to it a little bit. Tell us what your home life was like growing up. You talked about your brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was, uh, you know, my mom, uh, my brother and I, uh, you know, my parents got divorced when when we were real small and we still have a great relationship with my dad, but we primarily uh, lived with my mom. So it was the three of us. And, um, uh, you know, m mom, uh, she, she'll tell you had a hairdressing degree and a real estate license and two small kids to raise. And she had no idea what she was going to do or how she was going to do it. Uh, and the opportunity in the manufactured housing industry popped up uh, that that became what is four star homes today. And she would tell you she was just trying to figure out a way to put food on the table and raise these two two boys that were in her home. Uh, John and I are two and a half years apart. So um, as mom was growing the business, I was the older you know, of the two. Um, uh, we are a very close knit family. In fact, my brother still lives just a few miles away from us. Uh, now I moved to Orlando first and then he moved and then my mom actually bought a house over here too. So <laughs> we see each other a lot. Um, but, uh, you know, we grew up, the three of us really, really tight. Uh, and then we also had a really, really amazing uh, group around us uh, with our church, with our school, um, where we had a, a really fun uh, childhood. It was, um, uh, you know, lifelong friends, uh, faith was very important to us, continues to be, family was very important with us, uh, and it continues to be that way. Uh, but it was the three of us, and uh, and we had a really good time growing up in the Daytona Beach area. So I'm a, I was born in Lakeland. You don't find many of us native Floridians around, but born in Lakeland, grew up in Daytona, and, you know, have lived here most of my life. So where did you go to college, and what was your major? So the only years that I really lived out of Florida was when I went to college. Uh, and I did my undergrad degree at Oral Roberts University in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So uh, I graduated uh, from high school when I was 17. Uh, and I know it was a little daunting for, for mom to send her oldest son halfway across the country to Tulsa, Oklahoma. But uh, I had a teacher that I went to uh, that taught science. His name was Howard Lucy. And I had no idea where I was going to go to college. And his son uh, went to, to Oral Roberts and he said, I think you'd really like this. So, you know, my mom and I took a trip out there. I was kind of hooked. Um, I took off to ORU, spent four great years in Tulsa. Um, I actually, a surprising fact about me is I, I went on a music scholarship. Um, I played the trumpet <laughs> and, uh, and so I went to Tulsa, tried out, you know, got a music scholarship very quickly pivoted while I was at ORU, uh, from music to politics, if you can believe it. So I was in student government and ultimately was student body president at, at ORU, uh, and did my degree in finance and uh and then moved back to florida so my four years out of the state i was in in the the metropolitan area of tulsa oklahoma <laughs> that's fantastic do you still play the trumpet i don't i actually was doing some work at the house the other day and i found my trumpet in the attic and i pulled it out and blew a little bit and my kids were like what is this going on but no i uh, uh i just stopped playing i i love music i love all kinds of music uh but no i don't i don't play much anymore <laughs> I had not picked up my cello in 30 years and I started picking it up about a year, a little over a year ago. And, uh, it's very hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was in like the marching band and you know, we did all that fun stuff. It was great. But yeah, I, I, uh, I would be scared to actually really try to pick it up again. <laughs> so I had to start from the beginning. So tell us about how you stay connected to your alma mater, Oral Roberts University. So, uh, you know, after ORU, um, uh, I, I took a year off and, uh, and worked a little bit, then went to law school. And I really wasn't super connected to my alma mater um, until probably, I don't know, 15 years ago or so. I'd kind of gotten my career rolling. I'd gotten out of, you know, law school and, uh, and I got an opportunity to serve on the alumni board. Uh, so I did that. Uh, ultimately, I uh, was the chairman of the Alumni Association um, at a time where ORU was actually in search for a, a new university president. So they wanted a 
seven group, uh, seven person group of people to help select the university president. They wanted, you know, diverse interaction uh, and representation. So I was the alumni representative because I happened to sit in the chair. So uh, I got to sit on uh, this, you know, university president search committee, which was really an amazing experience with some really tremendous people. Um, and, uh, and we selected who uh, the current president, Dr. Billy Wilson, uh, was there. And being in there, they asked me to move off the alumni board and actually become a trustee of the university. So uh, I guess it's been about seven or eight years ago, uh, I became a trustee uh, at the university. I spend you know, two or three weekends a year in Tulsa and a lot of time uh, here, I chair the development committee. So help do fundraising and all that fun stuff. Uh, but, you know, ORU was a springboard of my life. It gave me some real, it gave me a great education, my degrees in business finance, and they have just a great business school there. Uh, but also, you know, biblically and in my faith, a foundation to springboard my life. And so uh, I find it a great honor. It's one of the joys that I have to give back to the place that gave so much to me. I think I got a few more years on my term as a trustee. We do nine year terms. Uh, and so I was actually scratching my head the other day thinking, what am I going to do when this thing is over? Because I just love it so much. But uh, but I love being in Tulsa. I love the university and uh, interacting with the students that are there and, uh, and the great things that the university is doing. So tell us where you went to law school. I'm not sure you mentioned that. <laughs> so I came back to to Florida uh, and when I was student body president at, at ORU my last year, I was doing a lot of traveling and kind of helping promote the university and things like that. So I literally had no idea what I was going to do when I graduated. I knew I had a business degree, but um, and I took the LSAT uh, without studying for it uh, at the University of Oklahoma and, uh, you know, and came home and I'm like, I didn't, I didn't apply to go to grad school. I was like, I was just done because I was, you know, working as student body president, traveling, trying to graduate, all that stuff. Come, I came back to Florida um, and I took a job uh, for a day, believe it or not, selling Jeeps, right? So that was my first job out of college was, uh, I was going to be a car salesman because I just didn't know what to do. Um, and my first day on the job selling Jeeps, I get this call and I had applied for a job with state farm insurance companies. And they called me and said, Hey, You've been selected to become a claims adjuster with State Farm. Um, I, I went and did uh, so. Obviously, I didn't last very long selling Jeeps. I don't even think I sold a vehicle, <laughs> uh, but I like cars, so that was a, a good start. Um, and uh, so I went and adjusted claims at State Farm, and then applied to a couple of law schools, and uh, and landed in Tallahassee at Florida State. Um, I knew I wanted to stay in Florida. Uh, I picked it because it was close to, uh, you know, the Capitol and the Supreme Court and the DCA and and uh, and a little bit smaller law school, about 200 in our class, and really enjoyed my three years there. Um, thinking back, especially now that we're just out of the presidential election cycle, so one of my years I was there from 99 to 2001. So I was in Tallahassee when the hanging chads were going on, um, and I remember all of our professors and uh, everybody giving all the Florida constitutional advice. And, you know, you, everybody else was watching it on CNN. I was watching it out of the back of a classroom because it was happening across the street. <laughs> so I was in Tallahassee, love Florida State. I was on their alumni board for a while, uh, still a season ticket holder and spent a decent amount of time in Tallahassee. I have family up there and, uh, and really appreciate the education that I got there at the university. So tell us where your first job was out of law school. So out of law school, uh, this is an encouragement to anybody that, that feels like they don't have a connection. Uh, my then girlfriend, now wife, uh, worked at Daytona International Speedway, where I was you know, from. I was from Daytona. And uh, she worked in the marketing department. And I did all the traditional stuff that you would do in law school. I did all the on-campus interviewing. I, you know, I, I talked to a bunch of law firms. And I just thought, I'm probably going to end up in Jacksonville, Orlando, maybe Atlanta, uh, working for a big law firm and um, just nothing kind of clicked for me or for any of those firms. So uh, Amanda, uh, she grabbed a directory, like literally a directory from the work directory. And I said, well, they get a legal department. Well, let me see what happens. So I literally sent in a blind resume, did not know a person at all um, in the legal department. And, uh, you know, lo and behold, a couple of weeks later, I get a phone call and they're like, you know, hey, we want to talk to you about this new position that we're going to open up. It's a hybrid HR and legal position. Uh, and I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. So we chatted about it. So I actually started out as a 
uh, Associate General Counsel and Securities Administrator for International Speedway Corporation, which is affiliated with, with NASCAR. They've since merged, so they're together now. Uh, and I administered their stock program on the inside, uh, their internal stock program, and uh, and then learned how to negotiate marketing deals uh, and, and did and uh, move my way up in, in the, the organization there. But it was a blind resume. Uh, some would call it dumb luck, but it was back home and it was a really, really fun 10 years. Incredible story. I love that. So you spent significant time at NASCAR and then SeaWorld. Can you mm -hmm. share with our audience how you know, you got to SeaWorld from NASCAR and the type of work that you did there? Yeah, yeah. So I was with um, International Speedway Corporation NASCAR for about 10 years. And as I moved and sort of found my niche, I became, um, I, I wouldn't call it an expert, but I specialized in intellectual property, marketing, and development. So those were kind of the three areas that I really paid a lot of attention to. Um, I was fortunate at NASCAR to be able to negotiate some of the biggest deals in the industry at that time. Uh, the sponsorship with Coca-Cola, with Gatorade, uh, with Anheuser-Busch. Uh, you know, we had a business guy on one side, but as soon as they strike the deal, they call the lawyers to paper it up. So um, I was working with our business guys and um, and just made a lot of really good contacts in the industry. So. Uh, one day I'm in my office in Daytona and I get a call from uh, a gentleman who I had done numerous deals with. And I was convinced that he was calling me to say, hey, we already did X, Y, Z deal. Um, let's paper it up. We're going to do it for a new another racetrack. And uh, uh, lo and behold, um, I had negotiated many, many contracts against this lawyer. Um, he was at Anheuser-Busch. And, uh, and he said, uh, Hey, I'm going to be your neighbor. And I said, what are you talking about? He goes, I'm moving to Orlando. Uh, Anheuser-Busch has just sold their parks and entertainment division, all their theme parks made, made up of SeaWorld, Busch Gardens, Sesame Place, and a few water parks, uh, to Blackstone private equity group. And we have to build up a company because we're separating from Anheuser-Busch. So we don't have any accounting. We don't have any legal, you know, we got all the park operations, but we don't have a corporate staff. Uh, and, uh, you know, long story short, I tell a lot of people this, especially new lawyers, I say, um, you know, your job is to get the deal done and advocate for your client as best you can. Uh, but you also need to understand that that person on the other side of the table may be your boss one day. Uh, and I didn't ever really interview uh, with him. Uh, we had negotiated so many deals. We were colleagues. We became friends. He and he said to me in my interview, he said, look, um, I know you're a fair lawyer. I know you're a good lawyer, but I know that your main function is to get the job done, put the deal together. And that's why I want you on my team. So he recruited me to Orlando. Um, I was there for, uh, you know, uh, let's see, about almost 10 years, about eight years. Uh, started out, uh, my background knowing securities helped me because we then took the company public in 2013. So uh, my securities background helped. Um, and then just as soon as we took the company public, the CEO walked into my office and said, hey, um, you know, you got kind of a range in your skill set. Uh, I don't want you in the legal department anymore. I want you to come work for me. So uh, when the CEO says that, you do. <laughs> and, uh, and I left the legal group and was the chief of staff for his office, for the CEO's office for a number of years, and then transitioned to work directly for the CEO. Uh, actually, full circle on my career, heading up the international development, but then also leading the business side of the marketing and sponsorship uh, for SeaWorld, Bush Garden, Sesame Place, and, and the other parks. Amazing. Amazing journey um, from a blind resume. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> so anyone that knows you knows that your wife and children play a significant role in your life. Tell us about them. No, oh, they're my favorite. <laughs> they're my favorite people to be with. Um, uh, you know, Amanda and I have been married almost 18 years now. Uh, we have three amazing children. Uh, Mackenzie's six, almost 16. I can't believe she's almost 16. Uh, Ava is uh, 13 and our son Austin is 10. Uh, they, they're the compass for my life. You know, besides my faith, my family is, is the next in line. I think anybody would know that. And, uh, you know, as we talked about earlier, part of my job transition was I was traveling so much. I mean, I did a couple hundred thousand miles uh, the last year that I was at SeaWorld. Uh, and, and I felt like I didn't want to miss this part of their lives. 
Um, I didn't, I love being with my family. I love being with my wife and my kids. And, you know, we just have such a good time together that for me, my job transition had a lot to do with that choice where I wanted to be with them. I wanted to invest in the most important thing that I have in my life, which is them. And it's really turned out, turned out great. Um, uh, McKenzie's a cheerleader. Ava plays piano. Austin plays baseball. They all have their great personalities, but Amanda and I love uh, each other a ton. Uh, we love to raise our family together and we love just being together as a family. That's wonderful. So, you know, you've spent a large part of your career working in the business world. And I think it's safe to say that the goals sometimes of business, the business world, don't necessarily always align with Christian values. So how do you deal with situations like this and how do you continue to walk in faith? Yeah, the business, um, the business world sometimes can be very cutthroat, right? It's all about the bottom line. Um, sometimes it's about people, but most of the time it's just about getting the deal done. How we make money? How do we make more money? What can we do? Uh, and you know, I uh, allow my Christian faith to really guide the principles that we have. I would say I have a little bit more freedom and flexibility, especially, you know, owning the family business where we are very forward in our faith. Um, uh, we talk about our faith uh, a lot. I take in some uh, cues and hints from companies like Chick-fil-A and Hobby Lobby and, you know, those that have have really been forward with their faith. Um, and, you know, what I would say is, hey, I, I try to be as fair as I can with everybody. I try to treat everybody with respect. And what we find is if you treat people right uh, and you treat them with love and compassion, it just works. I had a boss that wrote a book called Love Works. Um, and it was just all about how you use the principles of love to guide your business um, and see how it ends up on the backside. And it, it, it does every time. So for us, it's not about the almighty dollar. Uh, it's not about the, the black and white on the bottom line. Yes, we have to pay our bills. Yes, we need to make money. Uh, but doing the right thing, doing it with excellence, doing it with integrity and doing it according to the golden rule that the Bible says that you do unto others as you would have done unto you. And if we operate our lives like that, I believe that there's a win win in business and in anything you do in life uh, to walk according to those principles and treat people the right way. We like to end our show with a little fun by asking all of our guests the same seven questions we've turned now from a very serious question thank you for answering that <laughs> now some fun so what would people be surprised to know about you well i already told you one that i used to play the trumpet right <laughs> yes. um you know that's probably one that i people cannot believe that i went to school at a music scholarship but uh you know that's probably the, probably one of the more surprising things uh, about me uh i got a lot of little things that i do i'm a coffee connoisseur but they wouldn't be surprised about that i just i love good coffee i love coffee from all over and all my friends know when they go out of town or go out of the country you know they need to bring me back a pound of coffee uh, and I might have gone overweight the last time I went to Guatemala on a mission trip because I gave away a lot of clothes, but I brought back a lot of coffee and I, I stashed, uh, I don't know, 10 or 12 pounds of coffee back and I went overweight on my bag. So <laughs> there's a fun fact for you. <laughs> <laughs> when you have guests in town, where is your favorite place to take them? Well, they always want to go to the theme parks. And of course, when I worked at SeaWorld, they really liked to go with me because I knew all the shortcuts and all that fun stuff. Um, uh, you know, Orlando's got so many great things to do. Uh, you know, I love going to the beach. Uh, growing up in Daytona, we love taking people over to the beach. Uh, one of my favorite restaurants is at the Ritz Carlton uh, at Grand Lakes. It's called Highball and Harvest. It's uh, it's a local um uh, kind of farm to table restaurant that they have at the bottom. It's one of my favorites. Um, and then there's this really great barbecue place. It's right down the street from our house that is, appears to be world famous, but it's called yellow dog eats. Um, if you know where Gotha is, um, it's in this old hundred year old house and the chef there is awesome. Uh, I love food. So, uh, so I end up taking them, uh, places like that a lot, but highball and harvest and yellow dog are, are two top of the top of the list uh, places to go in Orlando. So what is the name of a book you recently read that you could not put down or the name of a show you enjoyed binge watching? Well, we binge watched a lot of shows on co with COVID and with the lockdown and things like that. So I would, uh, 
I will tell you, my son and I, uh, he he made me, we watched all of the Avenger movies. There's like 12 or 18 of them. I can't remember. We had a lot of fun, but we watched them in order, right? So uh, so it was like a month of our time. Uh, we had a lot of fun there. Uh, but actually the book, which I, I love, is um, Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. Um, it is a tremendous book. If you know anything or like anything about business marketing or telling a story, uh, he just, he succinctly puts it in a great spot. Uh, I love lots of books, but, but that's one that I think I read two or three times because it was a, a tremendous, you know, business book and uh, definitely couldn't put that one down. Among your close family and friends, what are you best known for? A lot of people, close family and friends want to know how I get it all packed into one day. I'm, uh, you know, hopefully pretty high energy. Uh, I think people say I'm pretty high energy a lot. Um, uh, and I'm just known for kind of just doing a lot of different things. I am really, really involved in our church, uh, obviously very involved in our business. And, uh, and I do my best to make every kid's event and family event a very, very high priority. So, um, you know, I think I'm known as a hard worker, a family man, a man of faith. Uh, and someone who kind of just just figures out a way to get it done. If you have a nickname, who gave it to you? I don't. I was thinking about this. I mean, besides Matt, you know, that's, uh, uh, you know, short for Matthew, but I don't really have a nickname. I could tell you my brother's nickname, but he'd probably kill me. Uh, <laughs> but I don't really have too many nicknames. If you knew you could not fail, what would you attempt? Oh man, I would probably quit my job and start a nonprofit doing something to help people. Um, uh, yeah, that's just, uh, I'm going to do it one day. I'm just not there yet. <laughs> I got to get these three kids out of school. <laughs> I feel the same way. I feel the same way. Um, what are the top three things you love about living in Florida? Uh, well, the weather, without a doubt, you just, you know, I'm a Florida boy, so uh, I love going to the cold, but I really love coming back. Um, I love the diversity of people, cultures, uh, food, all that kind of stuff. I mean, Florida just, you could go kind of anywhere in Florida uh, and uh, and you you could find anything to suit the taste that you're in or the, the mood that you're in. So I, I do love that. And, you know, I just love exploring all the different places in Florida. Growing up here, um, it's really fun when people just will throw out a random name like, Havana, Florida. I have family in Havana and they go, I had no idea there was a, a Havana in Florida, but I love all the small towns and, and old Florida, uh, you know, but also the the growth and the, uh, uh, the fun stuff that you can do central Florida or anywhere uh, throughout the state. Well, it's been a pleasure, absolute pleasure interviewing you today and getting to know you on this level. I've known <laughs> you for years, but to get you to know you on this level, it's been wonderful. Thank you so much for being a guest today. Thank you. It's been great. Great. So be sure to subscribe to our podcast channel on YouTube and all your favorite podcast listening platforms. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and visit our website to see some extras on Matt and to get his contact information. Our video stream director for this episode and audio editor for this podcast episode is Joy Tootle with Rocket Ship Consultants. If you're interested in starting a live stream or podcast, contact Joy at rocketshipconsultants.com. Thanks for tuning in.